you know weakening let us now proceed to discuss about the classification of a bank what are the different classification one is that central bank every country will have their central bank in india we have given the nomenclature like reserve bank of india which we will discuss in the you know second unit along with the deposit insurance corporation of india act 19 you know 62 deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation of india act 1962 okay and then commercial bank then agricultural bank commercial bank can also be called deposit bank agricultural bank can also be called rural bank and industrial bank can also be called investment bank and then we have got exchange bank or foreign banks okay uh, for your information there is also one more that is saving bank but uh, you know all these will do that you know uh, uh, what, uh, mainly the very function of the commercial bank among all is to mobilize the saving the surplus fund of the you know the people living in the society surplus fund of the customers surplus fund of the individuals thereby it will help for capital formation so savings as such oh, it it will say it will enable you obviously that uh, you know uh, as a result of the existence of the you know you know banks and uh, the various services that it offers uh, you know people tend to go for you know banking habits because it will help them it will help them it will enable them it will not only help them to save the money it will also uh, help them to you know formation of more and more money you can earn interest as well okay not only you earn but you will enable others earn how you know your surplus you deposit it in the bank and bank will lend it or invest it uh, in the you know needy i mean bank will lend it to the needy and invest in the you know pre, uh, in, in in the priority sectors and as a result money is made available to all of them so you are helping yourself and you are helping i mean you are helped by this uh, access to banking we are helped at the same time you are helping you know others uh, by our uh, what is that uh, you know banking habits as such by our savings as such right uh, uh, these are the classification that we can find now let us proceed as i said rbi we will proceed in the second unit uh, uh, i am going to briefly refer to because we can make a mention like commercial bank what is the meaning of commercial bank it's an institution which accepts a deposit from the you know people it's an institution uh, which is concerned with the acceptance of deposit from the public which is repayable on demand or after the expiry of short period and the granting which is engaged in itself what is that a commercial bank is an institution or is a bank which is concerned with the acceptance of deposits from the public repayable on demand or otherwise and withdrawable uh, you know and after the expiry of a short period whatever a withdrawable by draft order or uh, you know check uh, repayable on demand or after the expiry of a certain period okay uh, on demand may be current uh, or savings account withdrawable after expiry of certain period means uh, you know fd and uh, even uh, you know rd etc so commercial bank is a bank is a system of banking which is concerned with the acceptance of deposits from the public which is repayable on demand or after the expiry of a certain period and it will uh, uh, the granting of uh, you know uh, granting of mainly the short term and uh, you know medium term loan to trade commerce industry through wide network of branches across the country okay uh, and to grant the grant the loan or advance mainly short term loans and medium term loans to trade business industry through wide network of uh, branches uh, across the country this is what commercial banking so you can know that a commercial banking a commercial bank will engage in itself with the two main functions one is acceptance of deposit another one is uh, you know lending of money and uh, acceptance of deposit to various accounts you know what are the various accounts there are four savings account fd a fixed deposit account current account recurring deposit account and lending oh that is also there you know acceptance of deposits from the public and lending short term or medium term there are three as well as the duration of the loan is concerned there are three short term medium term and long term normally banks will uh, you know go for this uh, you know kind of depending upon the you know need the purpose for which the you know person willing to borrow person willing to take the uh, avail the loan or advance what is the purpose depends upon that whether it is to be short term whether it is to be long term whether it is to be 
you know a medium term you know as such okay the main features of commercial bank consists in this itself acceptance of deposits it will open any of those accounts at the you know desire of the uh, the customer public and it will grant loans okay it will also make investment correct it will grant loans what are the different uh, you know types of loans we will refer to that is short term loan long term loan and uh, you know medium term loan another important characteristic is that it is not only in the while granting the loan they are also performing several functions like uh, you know manufacture or creation of money as such and uh, another function is that commercial bank is a service industry rendering variety of services to depositors as well as to the general public okay and the commercial banks are also the oldest banking in the in a banking uh, uh, system in the country having wide network of branches and uh, holds a lion share of the total banking operations in india so it's a service it's a, in a role it's a contribution for the economic development of the country uh, can never ever be ignored and uh, its role is huge and its role is primary as well fundamental principal role of uh, commercial banks in the uh, you know uh, growth of economy of the country is very much uh, to be you know placed on record every time okay as i said the importance of the banks remember idle money is transformed to that of a productive you know money as such your idle money is transformed and it will be rendered it will be channeled through i mean to various productive sectors thus making a balanced growth in all sectors in the country that that will be helping to promote the economy okay that will be helping to promote the economy that will be helping to raise the value of indian currency itself when we you know export more import less then burden on the indian economy uh, will be lessened right so we need to go for that and uh, right now we will discuss with reference to their you know uh, functions of the commercial banks as such what are those functions of the commercial banks when we have meant a commercial bank like that when uh, we have seen the features the features of the commercial bank could be gathered from the definition itself the functions of the commercial bank uh, can be see i have mentioned and uh, then in this commercial bank we need to uh, you know i am not going to you know explain it but i will state it what is the difference between ba branch banking and uh, in a unit banking a short note it is a type of commercial bank that we find like a pure banking mixed banking and uh, you know branch banking uh, system that we find in india okay and uh, there we need to know branch banking versus unit banking a branch banking means a head bank conducts its banking operations with the help uh, throughout the country uh, with the help of network of branches okay huh? but whereas unit banking it doesn't have branches as such but there but there are various plus and minus with uh, you know branch banking with as well as unit banking but uh, branch banking plus is more than minus unit banking uh, i don't say you know uh, plus is more than minus in unit banking there is balanced but if it struggles then there will be more of minus that's what i said and then uh, emerging trends in the growth of commercial banks in the development of commercial bank what all those emerging trends that are happening as far as the you know functioning or growth of commercial bank in india uh, in a way uh, while explaining that we are referring to its role in the economic development of the country if uh, those emerging trends are expanding if those emerging trends are expanding it means that its role in economic development is very very huge and as a result of its role in economic development as a result that the country is demanding its role in to various sectors the commercial bank is expanding its you know the variety of functions to all sectors therefore its role in economic development is huge we will refer to that in brief and right now we'll you know catch up with the you know commercial bank and its functions what is that a commercial you know functions of the commercial bank it deals with one there are two basic functions of the commercial i mean there are basically two functions of the commercial bank one is basic functions principal functions are fundamental functions or primary functions of the commercial bank basic principal fundamental or you know primary function of commercial bank what are they one acceptance of deposit two investment i mean sorry lending three investment and four creation of money as i said 
फर्स्ट वन इज बेसिक प्राइमरी फंडामेंटल और प्रिंसिपल फंक्शन ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक व्हिच कंसिस्ट्स इन एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ डिपॉजिट्स लेंडिंग ऑफ यू नो लोन और एडवांसेस इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ फंड्स इन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज और स्टॉक मार्केट्स एंड नेक्स्ट लास्ट वन क्रिएशन ऑफ मनी वी विल जस्ट ब्रीफली एक्सप्लेन ऑल ऑफ देम and then the second one is that subsidiary function of the you know commercial bank what is the subsidiary function of the commercial bank subsidiary or secondary or uh, supplementary or ancillary or agency functions in other words we can call it as public utility uh, you know general utility and uh, you no know, agency services public utility whatever name you can call it as they are all secondary subsidiary supplementary ancillary and uh, it, you can also call it as you know public utility general utility or uh, agency functions but let us now refer to the first one that is uh, dealing with the you know basic or primary or fundamental or principal function of the you know bank as such first one is acceptance of deposit you know uh, one of the basic function uh, one of the basic importance of the you know modern banking is that it promotes Uh, you know capital formation your uh, you know uh, uh, the dormant money your idle money uh, uh, it, it will help you like uh, it will help you to mobilize banks will mobilize the small scattered idle savings of the people and make them available for productive purposes it will help the depositor it will help also every other how every other every other by bank granting or accommodating a loan or advance correct or even the investment sector it will help his idle money his scattered money his uh, surplus money it will help him to deposit with the bank and thus it will help the bank to you know uh, allow to grow each and every sector as such so that's what it, it it helps in the process of capital formation by offering attractive rate of interest Uh, it uh, i mean it uh, uh, by offering attractive rate of interest it will promote the thrift of saving among the people okay that is uh, by accepting the savings of the people bank provide safety and security to the surplus fund of the surplus money of the you know depositors as such and uh, not only that the banker will provide convenient and uh, easy process of uh, you know repayment you can withdraw it it will offer interest so many attractions are there that uh, as a result uh, you will be helping for every sector like uh, small scale sector rural sector industry sector agricultural sector i mean each and employ self employment sector when the banks are finding the liquidity then they will think of uh, introducing uh, newer means of you know lending or newer or uh, you know subject of uh, you know lending or advances uh, why it is to ensure that not one particular sector is given priority Uh, we don't want that imbalance of growth we, we we i mean we should ignore that we should desist from imbalance from promoting imbalance growth we want to see ensure the balanced uh, in a growth of every sector but every sector may not have the monetary ability therefore uh, you make them uh, you know available with the you know with the money and the bank will be made available with the money by the people by the depositors and uh, Uh, those those persons like uh, you know entrepreneurs or those persons businessmen they are made available with the money by the bank therefore we will see that all round development of almost all the sectors is possible so first function as i said by i mean the bankers uh, commercial banks main function is acceptance of deposit into various accounts what account it is you know choose and according to your you know requirement there are uh, uh, you know bank uh, offers several uh, you know uh, loan as such what is that loan what is that loan the functions of the commercial bank first one is that uh, first one what is that sorry uh, what are the different accounts that the bank offers uh, when a customer comes to open the account you will say um, what all the account that are subsisting in your you uh, know system that is savings that is current that is fixed that is recurring deposit remember there are these kind of you know accounts of course accounts may be going further right like cash credit account and all but still it is a type of a loan right savings account current account uh, fixed deposit account rd account which account do you want that account will be opened 
but it is subjected to some precautions to be taken by the banker while opening and operating the you know account that will always be there you know when the uh, you know what is that application form uh, he will give a account opening form will be given to you and in that account opening form you will furnish all the details to the columns you will have to fill plus those will be supported by the documents your photo your id proof your address proof and even the introduction of yours to be done to the bank so as to ensure yeah that is very much necessary because banks doesn't want to take any risk uh, they must not only identify you your identification must be you know ensured by introducer normally the introducer will be the existing customer of the bank or even the official of the bank but whether they will be willing to be an introducer of course you are not a surety of course you will not be you know liable but as far as uh, to be at, uh, to be identified so as to open the account so as to make you a member of the bank i mean member in the sense a family member a customer uh, so as to make you a customer of the bank it needs introduction and the introduce introdu person who is introducer to he introduces you he must be known to the bank remember an unknown person to the bank cannot be the introducer correct all these you have submitted and initial deposit also you have made that is called what is that minimum balance then account is opened which account savings current fixed yes but there are requirements as far as cooperative bank is concerned to open a savings account 500 rupees to open a check 1000 rupees as far as current account is concerned uh, say uh, sbi has 3000 savings and uh, uh, it has i think uh, 5000 for you know i mean 10000 for current account fixed account you know 100 rupees or more rd account similarly so you can have any of this i don't know rd account even could be uh, you know in the denomination of 100 itself per month okay installments and uh, this kind of an account uh, they, these kind of accounts are available which one you want you go and uh, you can differentiate you can differentiate between uh, you can differentiate between uh, any of these let us take uh, any of these like uh, current account and the fixed account or current account and savings account you know these are operatable what is the difference between still the minimum deposit is less the minimum deposit is more uh, of course there are uh, you know withdrawals are still limited withdrawals are more usually for individual customers usually for institution or traders usually it will uh, be offered with uh, uh, the less rate of interest in fact the least rate of interest that is uh, uh, with the banking uh, you know sector i mean what bank offers the rates of interest uh, uh, in the varied rate of interest uh, the least one will be provided to that of uh, but as far as the current account is concerned uh, no uh, no rate of interest. Uh, interest will not be you know, uh, paid for the deposits in the current account. Instead, if they are burdensome, then banker can impose charges. Uh, then what? Uh, check system may be there, may not be there, but it should be operated only through you know, check system. Smaller customers, larger customers. So likewise, you can distinguish. And uh, 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 savings and FD, Yes, it is operatable any number of times, but FD only once. You cannot partially withdraw the amount from the FD. Okay, but you can redeem it. Premature redemption is possible. Premature termination is possible, but otherwise, uh, you know, withdrawal from the FD account is not, you know, possible as such. Okay, you just distinguish one by one. That's what you know. Banker. Uh, that is why we call it as it promotes the deposits. It promotes the capital formation. That is why we also call you know commercial bank as a deposit bank as such. Okay, first function is done. That is acceptance of deposit to various uh, you know accounts. Uh, accounts. It is up to the uh, you know uh, norm up to the people up to the you know, person who wants to be customer. It is up to him to decide which account he wants. Generally, savings accounts are to promote savings. Uh, small people, not the big people as such. Okay. Uh, right. Second one is uh, what is that function? You know, lending. What is that lending? What way you will lend? A commercial bank function. Second function is lending. What way you will lend? There are uh, you know five different ways of lending. What is that? One loan. Okay. Another one, you know, OD. Another one, cash credit. Another one, discounting of bills. Correct. Uh, discounting of you know bills now these are there of course advance we can call but i have included within uh, the loan itself 
so the uh, lending that forms when uh, i mean these are the basic two functions of the banks acceptance of deposit and lending and investment okay but we are now talking about the second function of the commercial bank that is dealing with you know lending of you know money what sort of lending it may be short term i mean one you know a loan another one overdraft another one cash credit another one you know loan loans are granted generally uh, you know it is a financial arrangement under which advance is granted by the bank to the borrower on a separate account called loan account whatever the money that is granted to you whatever the loan that is accommodated to you the money will not be paid in cash to you instead a savings account is opened in your name and whatever loan accommodated that will be deposited there that is why i said it is a you know process of capital formation it is a process of a creation of a, you know money okay uh, this is called even active deposit whatever i uh, whatever deposit i make to uh, the account you know they are called uh, you know passive deposit or primary deposit or cash deposit whatever deposit i make to my account they are called passive or primary or cash deposit but whatever deposit when i when i go for a loan when i avail a loan or advance and this advance or loan will not be paid in cash mind you they will be instead deposited by the banker who accommodated the loan who accommodated the loan. say for example i go to the bank and ask for 5 lakhs loan banker says yes granted okay whatever granted amount will not be paid in cash or check to me instead an account in that bank is opened savings account generally in my name and amount sanctioned by way of loan is you know deposited there this deposit is called active deposit or we can also call it as derivative deposit or we call it as secondary deposit and the banker uh, i mean they are called secondary they rank second in importance but uh, 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 this particular uh, you know deposit is very important as far as uh, you know banker is concerned because uh, um, it helps to you know make avail it helps the money make available to the concerned as such it will help a larger section of the community and thus accommodation of money is made available to them therefore uh, in a way this secondary this derivative this active deposit will increase the total supply of money in the country that can be considered as you know money creation by the banks as such you understand therefore the loans are granted loans are granted in you know uh, i mean uh, uh, there are three different types of loans loans are granted to the needies who are willing what is that short term loan long term loan uh, sorry medium term loan and long term loan normally when a loan is granted for a period of uh, you know one year one year or less than one year it will be called a you know short term loan sometimes a loan may be granted for a period of more than one year say two years or three years or five years or seven years such are called term loan and uh, they are also called if it is within uh, that seven years they are also called uh, medium term loan or term loans but if it is for a considerably larger you know duration they are called you know long term loan normally bank go for short term or medium term loan okay uh, but as far as the long term is uh, loan is concerned it depends upon what particular purpose they are in need uh, for example land development for example uh, you know some uh, uh, i mean some uh, say for example uh, one is land development land development i mean that land development will itself you want to purchase a land you want to you know grow plants there and uh, say for example teak plantation but uh, you need longer term loan only why because by the time a teak would uh, you know teak tree grows big it will take about uh, minimum means about 20 25 years so at least uh, long term loan is uh, you know reality long term loan uh, if it is made a short term loan there are some say for example coconut or arecanut it takes minimum of 3 to 5 years to yield so if you go for uh, you know short term or medium term it may not be helping you and how will you make the repayment therefore you go for long term loan but banker will uh, carefully examine uh, the uh, what is that uh, uh it will carefully it will carefully examine your capacity of repayment the purpose for which the loan is granted whether you are capable after 7 years whether you are capable of making the repayment it will ensure that 
it will ensure your credibility it will ensure your uh, you know the genuinity it will ensure the purpose for which it is granted it will ensure that you will be granted only when they are secured of their you know repayment risk risk is there everywhere risk is there everywhere but don't invite the risk and lend that is huge in uh, you know, a fatality I, i can tell you if you know the risk certain risk then don't grant but uh, uh, under the assumption of sorry under the apprehension of risk don't indulge in not granting then uh, your very institution will be a total failure as such okay so lend loans loans of several types and then uh, you know loans are granted as i said it's a financial accommodation or arrangement that uh, uh, when it is granted it is usually a good function as such those who do not have you have brain but you do not have you know monetary ability in which case you should be accommodated with the you know money and when you are made available with the money then by applying your money you will start and remember loan for what purpose is grant for what purpose it is to be granted it must be clearly known to the banker and banker will assess whether uh, granting the loan for that purpose uh, either of the term whether a short term medium term long term will do good because ultimately banker yes yes i know his contribution is uh, you know for the growth is there because you are made available with money you will become affluent with the application of money you start earning more and more you become affluent you will make the repayment with the you know interest that's right but uh, under that hope banker cannot uh, you know grant you the loan without any examination without any careful anal i mean careful examination precautions are to be taken he will grant you he, uh, only when he ensures that it will come back to him with the you know interest right but when he, when he does when he does he is secured you are also promoted you are also promoted by granting the loan i am also secured because you know i will get back the you know, amount lent second function is that uh, as far as the you know lending is concerned the first one loan second one od the overdraft facility is available to only current account remember overdraft facility is available the busy traders customers or uh, you know larger you know customers uh because uh, 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 they i mean for them frequently money coming and going money coming and going they receive the check they you know issue the check so much of uh, incoming and outgoing obligations so you don't know when it will come when it will go and what exactly the you know outstanding balance in the account in which case uh, instead of going for the sec- uh, you know, savings account you better go for the you know current account a traders the business institutions uh, Uh, establishments uh, yes they will go for current account and from the current account uh, money will be when a uh, uh, current account holder he will have many busy you know transactions you know uh, at times it may not be possible with clarity to know whether the fund is available because he will have you know uh, some uh, you know outgoing obligation like he issues a check but unfortunately the money may not be there in which case what happens under section 138 of the negotiable instrument act the payee may file a case against you you being the drawer so avoid it i mean i am not saying that it will come he will go for but it will it not affect him drawer of a current account if you have i mean if you have not taken enough care and issued a check but actually there was no sufficient the fund in the account there may be chances there may be possibility of some risk therefore i am telling you mr current account holder you better go for because your customer should not be you know affected even you should not be exposed to any sort of prosecution therefore it is better to have uh, overdraft facility current account as far as the you know system is concerned banking system is concerned current account is attached with the, i mean only when you ask for but current account could be made available with the overdraft facility not a, a savings bank account in case if you want a savings bank account uh, in case if you want any such then you go and go for cash credit account but as far as current account is concerned you can go for an you know, overdraft and remember it is a sort of uh, you know financial arrangement under which the current account holder is permitted by the bank to overdraw his account that is to draw more than the amount standing to his credit up to an agreed limit remember overdraft is to some limit unlimited to unlimited extent the banker will not give 
Uh, I mean, uh, what is that outstanding balance in your account, your own money? I'm not concerned. What is that overdraft, uh, you know, facility that you want? Is it 10 lakhs? Is it 15 lakhs? Is it 1 crore? Is it 2 crore? Depends. What kind of a trader, whether you are a larger trader, smaller trader, businessman, establishment, it depends. And you may make that, uh, you know, arrangement between you and the you know, banker as such for allowing the overdraft. And when, say for example, 50 lakh overdraft, uh, uh, you know, arrangement has been, that is a financial arrangement, it is as good as a loan like arrangement has been, uh, you know, made between, I mean, in an agreement between you and the banker, it means to say that you may not be, it is a temporary financial arrangement or accommodation that is made available to you to save you, to save your business, trade, and also for the convenience of your, for the convenience of your, you know, pays 100% your customers, Mr. Uh, oh, oh, uh, current account holder, even your customers should not be suffering or uh, inconvenienced. Therefore, overdraft facility. When the overdraft facility, say for example, you have, uh, you know, taken that uh, temporary, you know, financial uh, er arrangement uh, by overdraft facility having, uh, uh, I mean, up to the limit of uh, 10 lakhs, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, what will be the rate of interest that will be charged? Yes. And it is calculated on a daily debit balances uh, for the actual period of you uh, for the actual period of utilization. Remember, of course, commitment charge will be you know uh, made. Commitment charge will be you know imposed because I am agreeable whether Mr. Uh, you know current account holder, since uh, uh, that of temporary financial accommodation or arrangement is made between you and. Uh, uh, in a banker by allowing overdraft up to the limit of 10 lakhs uh, uh, during the period during the period it's a temporary temporary it, it will not work for next year next year you want you have to separately enter into that uh, accommodation or arrangement but it is applicable say for three months say for six months like that uh, when a 10 lakhs arrangement is made banker will keep in its liquidity uh, keeping in mind that oh there are so many current account holders uh, and out of that uh, uh, many have opted for overdraft. Don't you think, therefore, not only uh, the amount lying in the you know current account, but also over and above that, those people are also entered into this overdraft arrangement. Therefore, I should have more liquidity uh, at my disposal so as to honor my you know those obligations. So it becomes a little of a, you know liability to the banker as such. But remember, you earn. In case if the overdraft limit of 10 lakhs is fully exhausted by him, then you will be charging the interest for such a number of a duration uh, as per the existing rate of interest. You will be charging on the full amount. But in case if I have taken only 2 crore, 2 lakhs out of 10 lakhs limit, 2 lakhs only, then I will be charging only on 2 lakhs. But remaining unutilized, I mean uh, unavailed uh, in a overdraft limit, 8, 8, is the, 8 lakhs is there, you know. For that, there will be no rate in rate of interest will be charged because that other money of 8 lakhs remained with the banker as such. But as far as uh, imposition of or uh, charging of interest is concerned, it is in respect of 2 lakhs, not in respect of the 8 lakhs, uh, which is uh, not uh, utilized, unutilized. For that, the banker will uh, charge a commitment charge. Banker will uh, levy a commitment charge. Otherwise, it will be a total uh, you know, loss as such. Whether you have used your ATM or not today, whether you have used your ATM or not, but when the ATM card is provided to you, uh, you are uh, utilizing the or not, it is different. But they will charge, they will levy annual charges as maintenance charges. Correct? Yeah. Because he has made it available to you, you can make uh, you know, use of the same. Whether you have made use of or not, why he should be bothered? Facility is given. It's you up to you now. Then cash credit, as I said. Cash credit is also a financial arrangement under which a borrower is allowed an advance under the separate account called cash credit account up to a specified limit and here again he will be charged only when the cash credit account when the cash credit limit is you know arrangement is entered into between you and the banker then in which case whatever the cash credit you know arrangement might have been taken in respect of 5 lakhs but how much of uh, you know uh, the credit i mean how much of amount actually you have borrowed correct only on that interest will be you know charged not on the amount of uh, cash credit sanctioned but only on the amount actually utilized by the 
customer of cash credit uh, you know facility customer of the cash credit account how much is actually utilized only on that he will be imposed with the uh, you know interest and not on the entire you know the cash credit sanctioned right though the cash credit arrangement is popular with the borrowers it's a disadvantage it is disadvantageous to a banker because he can charge interest only on the amount actually withdrawn by the borrower but unfortunately but uh, nonetheless he is required to keep at his disposal i mean he is required to keep at the disposal of the borrower the entire amount of the cash credit sanctioned though borrower may be borrowing a portion of it or half of it or three fourth of it but you must be keeping it ready you don't know when the borrower will make you utilization of the same whether borrower will make utilization in this percent that percent that percent or full percent you don't know you should keep it ready therefore that way it is not that advantageous to the you know banker as such okay but anyhow here again there is a provision for commitment charges in respect of the actual utilization of the cash credit accommodation whatever cash credit of 5 lakhs but you have utilized only 3 lakhs you will be charged with the rate of interest okay but whereas the unutilized amount they will levy the commitment you know charges then discounting of bills of exchange that's another one it is also a loan discounting of bills of exchange what in by discounting of bill of exchange ah it may also be called you know you can also go for post dated check you know in the uh, in a general analysis what i am telling see i have been issued with a check by one mr uh, you know ventes i have been issued with a check by one mr ventes and check is respecting in respect of sum of rupees 2 lakhs but uh, it is date it is post dated and it says 24th of 11 november a check has been issued by ventes the drawer and it is kendra bank check okay uh, the drawy bank is kendra bank okay remember of course there again you have collecting banker paying banker etc so this becomes the paying banker collecting banker will be uh, myself i have been issued with a check for rupees you know 5 lakhs by mr venkatesh and the check is dated 24 11 2020 what is the date today it is just running in uh, you know june you know therefore it is a post dated check but i go to my bank the kendra bank I, i have an account with the kendra bank okay i go to kendra bank sir please pay me i am in urgent need of it and then banker may take one risk he knows me banker may take one risk i am telling you i am explaining this discounting of bill of exchange how it is to be explained bill of exchange is also a negotiable instrument like check okay banker says see it is 5 lakhs you know um, i will you know impose some charges for discount i mean for paying you in advance though the check becomes uh, uh, effective only from 24th of november 2020 it is not yet uh, you know a valid check right now as per the date is concerned it has not yet commenced okay it will commence its validity only from 24th 11 but you need now only in the 6th month of the year i will pay but i will pay not for i mean 5 lakhs i will pay only 480 will it be okay so for these you know four months 7 8 9 10 11 okay for these five months i will charge you 20000 rupees understand banker says yes i will honor it and pay the money banker will then in the month of you know october what is that in the month of november he will collect it from ventesh you understand from ventesh account he took the risk he took the risk and he paid 4 lakh 80000 for i mean he took he paid you actually 5 lakhs only minus discounting charges this is called discounting charges that 20000 rupees that he retained with himself is called discounting charges because he assumed the risk uh, now the question if it is not paid by ventesh in the month of november that is from 24th onwards when the banker credits if uh, you know that is not paid then a banker will recover 5 lakhs from me understand in the month of november banker will uh, you know recover 5 lakhs from me so that is always there discounting of the bills even earlier subject to this condition 
but uh, remember let us not uh, uh, i mean let us not uh, you know think in terms of though that it will not be honored in november it will be honored but he will get how much the banker will get how much for these five months he will get 20000 rupees as discounting charges that is what the profit the banker makes banker will do only when he is assured of me only when he is assured of me and you know venkatesh in such cases he will undertake this here he has discounted the check because it is a post dated check even before uh, it could commence its validity he paid me my inus discounting charges there he will not pay me the cash remember understand he will not pay me the cash it is as good as a loan what's what i am telling you how much he paid me i relax not 480 because minus 20 is discounting charges he actually paid 5 lakhs but where this five you know uh, whatever uh, paid it is uh, 480 is as good as 5 lakhs where it will be paid whether it will be paid by your cash no it will be credited to a account called you know you know what is that credit account understand it so uh, uh, he will not pay it in cash that is what uh, is discounting of bills of exchange is also termed as creation of money function of the bank you want this instead of this i will explain i have given you check uh, discounting but i will give you uh, uh, same thing a bill of exchange is issued by the drawer and the drawee is directed to pay to the payee payee received it and the date is very much mentioned in the instrument that it becomes payable on the 25th of september very clearly mentioned in the instrument that it becomes payable on the you know 25th of september but it is i need the money today itself you understand i need the money today itself even in june itself what banker will do you need the money oh this bill of exchange is issued by that person he is good he is honest right i will discount i will pay you actually you are not entitled to pay because draw he has signed it that the money under the bill of exchange becomes payable by the draw on the 25th of you know september what is today june 25th therefore there is no question of making money as such you are not as of right mr pay you are not entitled but you need the urgency you have some urgency you need money what you will do you will go to the bank and uh, uh, you, you will uh, ask uh, this is the bill of exchange kindly you know kindly make the payment banker if he if it knows if it is secured then it will do it will do the it will do make the payment to you because a drawy banker knows the drawy banker knows the drawer banker knows the payee and when it knows if the banker feels secured then it will grant this loan accommodation this is why i said this is a lending this is also a form of lending when he discounted today that is 3 months earlier or 2 months earlier it means that he took risk but he will not pay complete amount what is the bill of exchange respecting some of rupees 3 lakhs he paid only 290 to me or 280 to me 2 lakh 80000 he paid not 2 lakh 90000 he paid only 2 lakh 80000 as such that 20000 or 10000 whatever he retains that is called discounting charges but actually how much he lent he lent 3 lakhs remember if on 25th when the banker accepted this remember today banker accepted this and paid to the payee 3 lakhs 3 lakhs but minus discounting the charges you understand he paid it pay it should be thankful to the banker but whether today or tomorrow banker will get the money no 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 banker will get the money in respect of that bill of exchange from the drawee who is directed by the drawer to pay and drawee is at 25th of september it becomes payable so banker will deposit i mean banker will present for payment on the 25th of september 2020 to the drawee and get the payment but from june till you know september it becomes a loan understand if the drawee then does not pay action will against action against the drawee may lie against the drawer may lie but banker need not go banker will come back to the payee hey pay back pay must repay the amount if banker is not paid on the 25th of september by the drawee that is why it is called a lending like understand pay must pay how much not uh, you know uh, what actually he received say 2 lakh 90000 
ten thousand he has already dis you know what is that deducted as a discounting charges. But uh, now if we insist you have to pay three lakhs only. This is what it is a loan accommodation. It is a creation of money function as such of the banker, but it is also a you know loan accommodation. This way you know it can be explained. And uh, you also please uh, you know uh, go to explain between. Uh, overdraft and loan okay a loan can be granted to any customer but overdraft can be granted only to uh, current account holder correct a loan can be granted to any customer but a current account holder savings bank account holder or a fixed uh, you know holder but uh, uh, sorry sorry uh, any account holder may be granted with a loan but only current account holder will be granted the uh, overdraft a loan is granted to borrower separate account is called loan account but whereas when the overdraft is granted, it is not a separate account, it is to grant it to the borrower's existing current account itself. Uh, in case of loan, the amount advanced by the bank is generally withdrawn by the borrower immediately in one full sum. But in case of overdraft, the amount of overdraft limit sanctioned, you know, the, uh, the current account holder borrows as and when it is needed, normally in installments, right? As and when he wants. Uh, a loan is permanent financial arrangement, but whereas overdraft is a temporary financial arrangement. A loan is granted relatively for a longer period uh, than overdraft. A loan is uh, granted relatively for a longer period than overdraft. And uh, interest will be charged on the full amount loaned, whereas interest will be charged only in respect of the actual amount uh, of overdraft limit actually utilized. Unutilized, it will not be charged interest. Maybe commitment charge may be you know, imposed. Please, generally the rate of interest charge on the loan is slightly lower than the rate of interest charge on the overdraft. Generally, low interest charge on the loan is lower than the interest charge on the overdraft. But mind you, in respect of over, uh, loan, entire interest will be charged on the entire amount uh, sanctioned. But in respect of overdraft, uh, low interest is charged only in respect of the actual uh, amount of uh, money that is utilized uh, from out of the overdraft uh, arrangement. Okay, the cost of administration of loan is lower than that of cost of administration of uh, uh, you know the overdraft as far as the banker is concerned. Okay, why? It is because you get uh, interest in respect of the entire amount in respect of loan. But you get interest in respect of only actual money utilized out of overdraft uh, uh, limit and uh, remaining amount unutilized you may impose only uh, commitment charge as such right to a borrower loan is costlier to a banker loan is uh, uh, you know beneficial to a borrower overdraft uh, mm, sorry to a borrower loan is costlier than overdraft correct uh, but to a bank, a loan is more profitable than overdraft. You understand? To a borrower, loan is costlier than overdraft. Why? Because the entire interest is charged on the entire money loaned. But uh, uh, interest is charged only on the money, uh, as far as OD is concerned, the interest is charged only on the money actually withdrawn in, in respect of the other uh, commitment. So therefore, to a borrower, loan is costlier. To a banker, loan is profitable than OD. This is what I said. So kindly, you know, uh, peruse the same. And next point is that uh, investment of securities. What is that investment of money on securities? As I said, investment of funds on securities. What is that? Government bonds, secured, uh, reputed uh, in a corporate house, reputed uh, in a companies. Uh, you invest in their shares or stocks. It is secured. Oh, not only you are investing the funds there, but also you are making money available to those companies, corporate sector or the government for all development or expansion activities. That's a good. And I said one way it is profitable to you, Mr. Banker. One way it is you are so, I mean, you are serving the society. Uh, one way it is profitable to you. Another way is your contribution to the you know, promotion of economic development investment of uh, funds on security but while investing the funds no don't always keep uh, in your mind that a uh, hey, profit oriented profit oriented no 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 you can't be uh, you know uh, that uh, very specific that i will be prepared to invest uh, only when there is a you know a profit to me no no you cannot be uh, only that Other, you should be serving okay but i said there are some sound principles of investment on funds these sound principles must be strictly adhered to by you.
you understand that in the name of investment of funds in the government security or corporate shares stocks etc you know if you forget these sound principles of investment then money invested will never come back money invested will go off so don't do that while you know money is still available with you of course you are guided by commercial bank or scheduled bank whatever you are guided by you are guided by certain principles uh, uh, not all the money that you have received by your deposits you can lend or invest there are definite portions meant to be yes what all they you know uh, as far as the uh, customers protection is concerned there is deposit insurance credit guarantee corporation scheme there is uh, you know deposit insurance scheme i mean even uh, for the banker credit guarantee scheme is there under the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation of india act 1962 there is cash cr uh, credit uh, what is that called crr cash reserve ratio you understand you are governed by the crr uh, in a policy of the rbi from time to time they keep increasing it they can uh, and uh, usually the crr will be ranging between 3% to 15% of your total time and the saving deposits term and saving deposits fixed rd savings current all these deposits put together what is your uh, you know capital out of that the rbi from time to time it will prescribe hey 3% right now i think uh, it is 3.5 okay but uh, Uh, if the, if if the reserve bank of india finds hey banks are playing with the money therefore in such a case uh, if the banks are doing uh, with, uh, like that then the inflation may go up money value may come down in such a case what they do they will contract there is contraction in the sense they will increase the cash reserve ratio to say for example 4 or 5% see even a small 0.5% or 0.25% is also increased then banks you know what is that liquidity will be shortened say for example in our total you know amount a total amount of money in our account in the bank i said not individual account total amount of money from all the customers of all the savings or fixed or uh, you know current or uh, rd put together the total amount of money is about uh, 400 crores imagine is about uh, 400 crores and out of this 400 crores if the present rate of crr happens to be 4% 3.5% how much it will go how much it will go about uh, uh, you know 14 crores correct yeah 14 crores you have to deposit with whom 3.5% of 400 crores means 14 crores okay 14 crores of the customers money i mean banks money banks money or customers money as far as that bank is concerned it has got 400 crores of deposits of all account put together out of that 14 crores you must deposit with the rbi in crr which carries no rate of interest but uh, all these 14 crores form 400 crore part for which you have promised to pay the interest barring this current account correct but look at this this will promote the credibility in the you know banking sector as far as the people is concerned because even in liquidation this 14 crore will be saved deposit insurance right now from february 2020 onwards it is increased to 5 lakhs earlier it was you know 1 lakh provided you should have that amount but if you don't have then uh, whatever amount say for example right now the rule is that uh, each depositor is guaranteed by deposit insurance scheme up to the extent of 5 lakhs but if you had only 50000 in your account only 50000 will be paid to you if i have 6 lakhs in my account but only 5 lakhs will be paid to me by that uh, you know deposit insurance scheme as such remember Uh, out of 400 crore 14 crore gone then you should have the liquidity to fulfill the obligations towards your customers customer may withdraw he may not come today in the past yes he used to go to the bank counter and get the withdrawal but today he doesn't he will uh, you know issue the check he will go to the atm in a counter and draw the money something like that so therefore in your liquidity you should have enough uh, you know fund available to meet the daily needs of your customers normally 
uh, that can be between 15 to 40 percent remember 15 to 40 percent 15 to 40 percent of your total uh, time and the savings deposits out of that 15 to 40 percent should always be available with you the garbage will uh, from time to time prescribe i think uh, it stands at uh, 18.5 or 18 okay to, i don't know exactly 18.5 as it now stands 18.5 percent of your total deposits that is 400 crore it comes to about 74 crores you should have in your liquidity all time why you know that is to meet the obligation towards your customers when the customer wants to swipe his atm if the money is not there then what fun there will be a panic situation will be created all customers of the bank will go and uh, you know they will stand in the queue to uh, completely withdraw their money bank will go to liquidation i mean banking sector will suffer therefore you should have the money in your liquidity uh, reserve bank of india keeping the economy keeping the need etc keeping the uh, also in mind the uh, rupee value etc it will prescribe from time to time what rate of uh, at what particular percentage minimum 15 maximum 40 it should be there which one should be there which which one should be there uh, the liquidity statutory liquidity this is called slr so i said out of the 400 crore out of the 400 crore 15 paisa for every 100 rupees 15 paisa for every 100 rupees you pay to deposit insurance scheme as a premium bank yeah 15 paisa for every 100 in that case 400 crore how much you will pay okay one is that 14 crore at present rate 3.5 percent crr you will deposit with the rbi and at the present rate 15 to 40 at present it is 18.5 18.5% 18 of the total 400 you should have in your disposal to meet the daily obligation of the bank towards the customer. When the customer wants to withdraw, banker cannot say no, I don't have money in that. So to meet all these, yes, he should have. So your investment therefore, investment or loan bank, you are performing all these functions but they are subjected to these restrictions. What these restrictions? These OD, I mean, uh, these uh, CRR, these uh, deposit insurance, these SLR, we are all bound by these restrictions. You can then proceed to lend. But uh, as far as the lending is concerned, see that what is the purpose of the loan. See that whether, uh, uh, I mean, you don't uh, grant loan just because it is more profitable to you to only one sector. The other sectors are ignored, neglected. Don't do that. Diversification of risk. And uh, uh, the loan should be spread over to all areas, agriculture, industry, small scale, all these self-employment. You try to contribute to each sector and uh, thereby, you know, uh, allow uh, the uh, you know, grant of loan or in, then while making investment, you are to be bound by, as I said, investment on government securities, government bonds uh, or uh, investment on uh, uh, the stocks or, uh, you know, uh, shares, etc. If you want to invest and earn, uh, you know, uh, reap good benefits in such a short time, do it. But uh, apply your mind whether it can be good. And uh, always uh, uh, keep in mind the customer's interest factor. Customer's interest, uh, it is their money. You know that your money, my brain, our bank. But my brain should be properly utilized. And my brain should always be concernful towards my customer and the national economy. And I mean, considering these, you can proceed to invest on this government bond or stock market or shares, etc., etc. While investing so, you are to be guided by the following four principles. One, liquidity. Another one, profitability. Another one, security or safety. Another one, social responsibility. Okay. You are, uh, just because it is profitable, don't invest. While making investment on the government bonds, on the government securities, on the stock markets, on shares, please be guided by the following principles while making investment, Mr. Commercial Bank or any other bank for that matter. What are they? Safety, liquidity, profitability and social responsibility. Okay, that very much uh, you know, taken care of by you while making investments. And lastly, it proceeds to creation of money. As I said, bank, uh, commercial bank performs another role uh, what is that uh, you know basic or primary or 
you know, fundamental or principal functions of the commercial bank are acceptance of deposit, lending of funds, investment and creation of money. How they create? The lending of funds, I told you, know, what is that? Loan, overdraft, discounting of bills, cash, credit, advances. When you do that, you are performing a major function like uh, uh, creation of money or creation of credit or even purchasing the uh, fixed assets. Purchasing the fixed assets. See, when you grant loan, see, when you grant overdraft, see, when you grant uh, you know, uh, uh, money um, uh, on what? what uh, discounting of bills, correct? Or cash credit, or uh, you know, what is that called? Advances, or by purchasing uh, fixed securities. Yes, in a way, when you advance loan, whether you will pay the money in cash, no. See, when you accept the deposit, uh, I, I, as I just now said, when you accept the deposit from the customers into account, they are called primary deposit, they are called passive deposits, they are called cash deposits. You understand? When you accept deposit, then the first function, it is called primary deposit, cash deposit or passive deposit. But when you accept, uh, I mean when you grant loan, you don't pay them cash. You will create an account and then deposit that amount accommodated by your loan or in advance or whatever uh, to an account opened in his name in, in your bank. And this is called, this is also a deposit made, correct? When I grant you loan, when I discounted your bill minus discounting charges, when I purchased the fixed you know, securities or when I granted advance or when I have you know, given you cash credit accommodation or when I allow you overdraft, overdrawing a current account in all these cases that overdrawn amount is deposited into an account it is not paid in cash all the time when a loan is granted, granted but an account is opened in my bank and whatever loan granted to you that amount is deposited to the account correct this is called, this deposit is called secondary deposit or active deposit or it is also called derivative deposit you understand that derivative deposit because it is a, not a deposit directly made by the customers but it is a deposit made by the customers through a loan accommodation through you know this lending accommodation that you have taken you create see when a loan is granted to a customer my bank's own money it is correct huh? his own money but he grants you the loan when he granted that loan it becomes your money and it is not paid in cash it is deposited to an account therefore bank creates money whatever bank say for example today bank has got two crores uh, two crores of money but uh, today good day that he has granted several loan accommodation whenever uh, it may be overdraft it may be you know, discounting of bills, it may be a discounting of bills also I told you, you know, it is a loan till actually banker gets he of course on the faith he paid you but it is post dated uh, when that date comes he paid you now only minus discounting charges when that date actually comes in case if he gets that's good in case he doesn't get he will come back to you and you know, get all the 3 lakhs he actually paid minus discounting charges 290 but he is entitled to get 3 lakhs in case if that bill of exchange is not honored by the drawee on 25th of September 2020. That's what I said. It is a loan till then. So, but that amount is not given you by way of cash. It is paid to you by opening an account. Therefore, don't you think out of two crores, I may make several crores for that day by granting various loan accommodations or I mean loan. It may be loan, it may be overdraft, it may be discounting of bills, it may be cash credit account or it may be in advance or it may be even when I purchase a land, remember, when a, a land is purchased, money will not be paid in cash to the purchaser. Money will be created to an account opened in the name of the purchaser as such. So this way, by these different methods, is closely connected with that of lending. Uh, banker also performs, not only that he enables every other sector by lending, he helps financial accommodation, but also it is, a, it is also called a process of manufacture of money or creation of money it, it increases the you know fund supply for all activities in the country economic development possible therefore it helps for capital formation these are in fact the basic functions of a you know, commercial bank 
But there are even subsidiary functions of the commercial bank which we will discuss in the next clip. Thank you.